there's the wide oak we came to look at. It's about 34 inches there on the large end. And it's an eight foot timber. Check it out, Bruno, look at that one. But over here, we got some more wide oak we're gonna be getting. Right there's the bottom cut, the second cut. We'll be grabbing both of those as well next week. All right, Bruno, come around front here, buddy. Let's look at these other ones. And over here in front of the log truck, got a nice stack of red oak. Some really good saw logs right here. I think he'll be bringing these over on Tuesday as well. And then check out the log truck right there. I bought this truck as well. It's full of red oak and some really big poplar right there. About 30 some inch poplar on there. Be some good sawing on there, guys. Really good stuff. Take another look at this wide oak right here before we go. This is the reason we came. Check this one out. And it was dead standing. But it looks pretty good, guys, other than that defect right there. It's gonna be some really good sawing right there. Probably try to quarter saw this one if we can. All right now, friends, we're back here at the sawmill. Got in three loads of timber today. The first one we had to go get, got some white pine on the trailer. Pretty low grade, there's a lot of knots on there, but we'll get some decent boards out of it. Now down here, guys, this one right here is gonna be pretty special. Looks kind of rough right there, but hopefully that won't go in too deep on the crotch end. And this is cherry. It's 12 feet long. Down here at the crotch, it's about 40 plus inches wide. 
And on the small end, which is not small at all, it's about 38 inches down there. Just can't get over the size of it. We just don't get cherry like this around here, guys. The average probably diameter for cherry in this area is around maybe 18 or 20 inches at the most. Very nice log. Got a little bit of a sweep to it. I may have to come in here about right there and make a four foot log with the crotch and then an eight foot log. Got a pretty good bow in it on the other side. I'll have to see what happens whenever we pick it up with the tractor and get ready to saw it. Really nice log, guys. I was really not expecting that one today. Really happy about that one. Look over the wind noise, guys. It's extremely windy up here today. This is the last load we got in, more white pine, smaller sticks on the top and some really good sized ones there toward the bottom. Probably about a thousand to 1500 board feet right here total. Not bad, I was really looking forward to these as well. I'll be sawing those into four quarter boards. Nice stuff. So welcome back to the sawmill guys. We're inside the wood shop today and we're working on the timber frame and I'm really behind on it. I was hoping to have that barn completely under roof in the winter and it, I'm not even got it standing yet. It's just been a really long process. And the only real good excuse I had was the COVID stuff because Bruno's been out of school since March and now we're into June, it's summer vacation. Hard to get a lot of stuff done here. I'm behind on saw milling, kiln drying, woodworking. I'm working on these timbers, but we'll get this done. I'm gonna start putting all my focus toward this barn for the next few weeks because I need to get it under roof because I've got a lot of big things happening here at the sawmill this summer and I need that space really bad. More on that later. But uh, today I wanna to tell you guys about a new tool I got here. And this is not a sponsored video or nothing like that. This is a two inch Japanese chisel. It's a timber framing chisel. It's not a slick, although I'm using it as a slick. And what's unique about these Japanese chisels is, if I can bring it in here close, it's got a little bit of a hollow grind here on the back. So when you sharpen the back of it, you're just really lapping the top right here. This bottom, you don't have to worry about. It's less work on sharpening. And the same thing goes right here on the bevel. So it's a really nice chisel. I really like it. These things are laminated steel. And I have another uh, Japanese chisel. It's actually an inch and a half slick I got off eBay a few years ago. It works really good too. But it's not as sharp as this one right here. I've laid this one to the wood this morning. I was working on a tenon here on this walnut brace and it really just went right through it like hot butter. It was ridiculous how sharp it was. And I've not even honed it yet. This is how it was shipped to me. So uh, a really nice tool. So let me talk about this company real fast, guys. And once again, this is not a sponsored video or nothing like that. So this tool came to me from a company called Shelter up in Maine. And what they do is they build timber frame homes, they have timber frame classes, and most importantly, they have timber frame hard to find tools like this, because it's hard to find uh, good Japanese chisels in this country. I think Woodcraft may sell them, but I've never tried theirs before. But uh, they have a really good selection of timber framing tools. Actually, my Japanese saws, where are they at? I got a mess in here. This one right here I bought from Shelter as well when I started this project here a few months ago. Love this saw right here. And another saw I got from them is the Silky Saw. I've not even showed this yet, guys. This is probably the fastest cutting hand saw I've ever used. It cuts your arm off. It's ridiculous. So I get a lot of emails from people who watch this channel, particularly the timber framing videos that I've done here. They're always asking where to get tools at. Well, go to Shelter, guys. I'll leave a link down below to them. You can go check it out. They have just tons of tools right there on that website, and they'll ship them to you. And the second thing is, is timber framing, uh, I guess you would call it education. Now, I'm no professional timber framer. This is the first timber frame I've ever even worked on, you know. So it's pretty ambitious to do your first one as a barn that's going to be 30 by 30. And I pretty much got my education from books and talking to my buddy Jim up in New York and my buddy Tim out in Dakota, and they've helped me out a lot. But just recently, 
I signed up for the Shelter Institute online classes and I watched all those videos during this COVID lockdown stuff while I was in the house doing homeschooling with Bruno and it's helped me out tremendously because it's a really good in-depth straightforward course on how to cut different joints for a timber frame. It's really helped me a lot. I signed up on that a few months ago. I've watched all the videos. It's really good stuff and if you're interested in learning how to timber frame you know, I recommend books to everybody because you can always reference back to those all the time. But these online courses are really good. And this is no sponsored video or nothing like that. There's a link down below to that little website where you can sign up for their classes. I think you can sign up and do the first class for free or get like a demo. And then after that, you can buy the course. So this video today, guys, is just going to be a good reference for me for the most part to send people to when they ask me, how do you learn how to timber frame? You know, I'm gonna give y'all Shelter Institute's website. You can go there and buy your tools and their online courses. You can go there and learn from the experts. So those guys are the experts. They've been doing it you know, longer than I've been alive. So there's links down below to both of those sites. Go check them out when you have time. And I'm gonna bring the camera in now and get to the good stuff, guys. I got a nice walnut brace I've just finished and we'll do some shaving on the tenon with this chisel. Extremely sharp. Love Japanese chisels. This is just a really nice chisel. I love chisels all together, especially in this timber work. Good stuff. So this tenon is finished. All thing I need to do is come in here on these corners and bevel them. That way when it goes into the mortise, there's no friction and it slides right in. And most of the time I'll come in here with a spoke shave. This is a little Lee Nelson bod shave right here. Because there's not a lot of chance of you know, tear out or spelching here on the sides of the spoke shave, but we're gonna use this chisel here just to show you guys how sharp it is and how good it works. So, look over my squeaky sawhorse there. Not a proper sawhorse, guys. My good wooden ones are up at the mill. So as you can see, That is really sharp right there. And something else I'm looking for is the finish that it's putting on the wood right there. And took too much off right there. You can get carried away guys on these chisels and take off too much material. I've done it many a times just by shaving with them. So right here, if you, you know, that's just a really nice slit finish right there. Really good. Really like this chisel right here. I'm using it as a slick. That's one thing about these Japanese chisels where they're laminated on the back. You don't really use them as a framing chisel as far as, you know, putting them in a mortise and twist them back and forth. That will break this steel the way it's laminated. You know, a bar chisel or Robert Sorby, you know, that's what they're made for. These are a little bit different right here. I use them all for pairing all the time and kind of use them as a smaller slick where I don't need the weight of a slick, just something a little bit lighter. But man, here I am again, getting carried away. Keep on just nibbling down here. It's just fun, guys. I'll tell you, you get a good sharp chisel and you start cutting on this wood and it's just enjoyable watching the shavings come right off with ease and the finish it leaves. So that one's pretty good right there. We'll call that one done. Let's test it in this mortise and see how it fits. Those saw horses are driving me crazy. All right, guys, got a really good fit right here. It's tight to that shoulder, as well as the housing back here. When I, you know, this right here would get a peg whenever I install it. I've not showed these either on the channel. Right there are the pegs. These came from Northcott up north. I think Massachusetts maybe. I can't remember. I'll leave a link down below to their website. But this right here is hickory. And they bevel the, the leading edge right here for your mortise or for your peg hole rather. It will go in right there or in that area right there to secure this to the post. So once that's done, I will probably draw bore this just a little, which will tighten this up a lot tighter than it is right now. So let's head outside and we'll cut the mortise and the tie beam for a brace. And that tie beam will be finished. 
Then I need to run to Harbor Freight and pick up a blowtorch because tonight we're gonna burn those tie beams before we assemble them tomorrow. So stick here with me guys, you'll get to see me burn my work. Crazy as that sounds. <laughs> 